preterm labor is the topic for uh, this video. And uh, preterm labor is essentially defined as uh, having contractions uh, before 37 weeks. So um, these contractions are going to be causing cervical change and that cervical change um, will, is easily detected um, and the contractions will likely uh, lead to a, pre a premature um, delivery of a fetus. Now the topic really, the focus of this topic is the treatment of preterm labor and um, the licensing exam questions uh, focus a lot on the treatment options. They'll give you a scenario of a woman that's in preterm labor and they'll say what is the next step or what is the appropriate treatment. And there's three uh, main things that you do when a woman is in preterm labor. The first is antibiotics. And antibiotics are used basically to treat group B strep. This um, is a common infection so you will use antibiotics. Which antibiotics you will use? The most common of course is penicillin. If a woman is allergic to penicillin you can use other choices such as uh, clindamycin, erythromycin, Um, if the woman has a penicillin allergy. So what is the next uh, step in treating preterm labor? Well the next step is very important. It's something called tocolytics. Now, tocolytics are a very important part of uh, licensing exam questions. Tocolytics are basically drugs that stop the uterine contractions. So I'll just erase that they stop the contractions and tocolytics the way you can think of it is medications that you would give to buy time so to give instead of uh, delivering the baby right then and there to buy time in the sense of maybe about two days but delaying the delivery by two days now you might say well what is the reason you want to delay it by two days well, the most important reason is you want to give the third treatment, which is corticosteroids. And when you give corticosteroids, you allow the fetal lungs to mature. So two and three sort of go hand in hand. You give tocolytics. They buy time, they give you about two more days to stop the contractions, and during those two days you give the corticosteroids and that will help build the fetal lungs. To mature the fetal lungs is important because of course it will decrease the risk of any neonatal respiratory problems. And the most common corticosteroids used are betamethasone or dexamethasone. So this, this video I really wanted to just touch on those three basic things during preterm labor and in, in, in particular really the three medications. They're the antibiotics to treat the group B strep, tocolytics to stop the contractions by time, and then during those two days extra that you've uh, prolonged the um, pregnancy essentially, uh, you give corticosteroids which will help uh, mature the fetal lungs. So. Here's a vignette that kind of illustrates that. A 34-year-old primigravid woman at 30 weeks gestation comes to the physician with regular contractions every six minutes. Her prenatal course was significant for type 1 diabetes, which she has had for 10 years. Over the course of one hour, she continues to contract, and her cervix advances from close to and long to a fingertip of dilation with some effacement. The patient is started on magnesium sulfate, penicillin, and betamethasone. Which of the following is the most likely side effect of the administration of corticosteroids? So this is a great question. You have a woman who is obviously in preterm labor. 
as uh, she is only 30 weeks. This patient has given all three things that we discussed. She's been given penicillin to help treat the groupy strep. She's been given magnesium sulfate and I don't think I mentioned this but this is a tocolytic. Tocolytic. That's the drug that you give to buy time. And then she's given the beta methazone, which is the steroid to help with fetal lung maturity. Now they're saying what kind of side effect is she going to have because of the steroid? Well, steroids increase the blood sugar. Hyperglycemia. Now this patient is already diabetic. So because she's already diabetic, it's going to be a little more difficult to control her blood glucose. So her blood glucose will need to be monitored and because this is she's already diabetic and she's getting now a steroid she will likely have elevated blood glucose so she will be need to be treated with insulin which of course lowers blood glucose levels so the appropriate answer to this question is B increased maternal insulin requirement.